y'all, it's Nikki. Welcome back to my channel. Um, for today's video, I actually wasn't really planning on doing this video. I was getting uh, ready to film my video later on today, and I realized during my morning ritual, I was doing a beauty step that is still kind of taboo. And I just wanted to talk about it because it took me a very long time to figure out what was right for me, what worked, what didn't, um, you know, busting all the myths out there. So today, I want to talk with you ladies about facial hair removal. This subject is maybe not quite exactly taboo, but I know women are not exactly comfortable talking about it, so I figured why not put myself out there and talk with you guys about um, my mustache, my sideburns, my chin hairs, all of it. Since the dawn of time, women have had facial hair just like men. And of course, there is a big stigma around removing facial hair. Um, there are some women who just rock all of their body hair. I absolutely love that. More power to you. And let me tell you, I have put my face through the ringer trying out all the different types and methods of hair removal throughout the years. I have tried plucking out my mustache hairs, which is a slow effort of futility because there was just way too much. I have tried wax strips, which is Sufficient for the mustache, not so great for the sideburns, and pretty much all the other hair on my face. I have tried Nair. Never, ever, ever use Nair, even the facial cream, if you have sensitive skin. I was a teenager when I went on this adventure, and I literally pretty much burned a hole in my cheek. Um, it was only superficial. The scar eventually went away, but it did scar. It was pretty bad. I do not recommend Nair if you have sensitive skin like me. Everyone has facial hair out there. Um, some simply have different hair than others. Some very lucky women have cute little soft blonde peach fuzz and it's honestly adorable. It kind of makes me sick. <laughs> but for those of us out there who... I have a lot of facial hair. I have a lot of long facial hair. I have a lot of long dark facial hair. I do have sideburns, and I mean like bitchin' sideburns. Like Elvis would be proud of me. I mean, as you can see, I do have some fuzzies right here. I have a lot of hair. I even trimmed the hair back here. And on top of that, I would have a glorious mustache that was pitch black. <laughs> then of course, I have Larry and Fred. Larry and Fred are the two very coarse, very black, very thick hairs that grow out of the tip of my chin right here. It's always the two same hairs, it's always the two same spots. I don't know what it is, but those two hair follicles are just out to get me. And those hairs always grow back, so I decided to name them because they are a permanent part of my life now. <laughs> but basically, between the sideburns, the mustache, and Larry and Fred, I have a lot of facial hair, so I did start shaving once I started wearing makeup. Like I would take menthol shaving cream, I would put it all over my face, and I would take the razor and I would shave it kind of like my husband does in the morning. And whenever I first started doing that, I was very happy with the results. It was really smooth, really silky. But of course, with my sensitive skin, that did not go well for very long. Even though I was going with the hair and not against it, I was getting razor burns. It really kicked up my acne under the notch. And I would just honestly get just little patches of eczema and rashes. Just having a razor run against my face like that just was not good for my skin type. So I had to find a different alternative. This is the Remington Smooth and Silky Rechargeable Razor. And she is my best friend. I don't go anywhere without her. So this is amazing for so many different reasons. This is technically supposed to be used for the body, like for um, legs and arms for women. But whenever I saw the way this was designed, I... I had a feeling this was really going to work for my face, and it does. So for starters, it has three separate floating foil heads. So it really does move like a men's facial razor, but I love this because it's, I mean, it's pink and squirrely and it's cute, but I can use it all over the body. It is waterproof, so you can use this in the shower as long as you don't, you know, dunk it in the bathtub. But with the floater heads, it's really able to contour to pretty much every shape of my face. It really gets the jaw well. And this does not hurt. It doesn't pull hairs, it doesn't pinch your skin. This is truly ouchless, which is what I was looking for to use on my face. It's also really easy to clean, which is very, very important. I have acne prone skin. As you can see, I have a bit of a hormonal breakout right now. Totally normal, different subject, moving on. 
being able to wash this daily with antibacterial soap really makes things easy and really minimizes this causing any kind of breakouts because it's fresh and clean every time I use it. Because you can just pop off the head right here. And the head, I can just put antibacterial soap all over it, scrub it really well, rinse it, and just lay it out to dry. And by the next day, it is good to go. I do believe this has a running time of 30 minutes total. And whenever you're only using this for about, like, what, a minute, a minute and a half every morning, I will fully charge this and it will literally last me weeks. And then whenever I do charge it, I think the total charge time is four hours, but all I do is just charge it before I go to bed and it's good to go the next morning and I don't have to touch it for the next month. And I am not kidding when I say I use this every morning. This is part of my morning routine. I get up, I brush my teeth, I wash my face, I shave my face, I exfoliate it, and then I treat it with my acne treatments. Another thing I do want to talk about is the actual myth of shaving your face. Pretty much every little girl was told when she was younger that if you shave your face, if you wax your mustache, whatever it may be, your hair will come back thicker and darker than it was before. I'm not a scientist, but thanks to the internet, I am fairly certain that this is an absolute old wives tale. It seems like that happened simply because of our perspective, and there are a couple factors of that. First off, hair is naturally tapered. It is very, very thick at the base, and then as it grows out, it tapers off and is thinner on the end. So whenever you cut it off and it grows back in, it feels thicker and coarser because it's the very base of the hair and it hasn't grown back out and it hasn't tapered out yet. So yes, it does feel coarser, but in reality it's not. And another part to that is it being darker. This is not necessarily true. Whenever your hair grows back, yes, it looks darker, but that's because it hasn't seen the sun yet. The hair on your face will naturally get lightened from sunlight. So whenever you shave it off and it comes back in, it does look darker, but in reality it's not. It's just it's just not lightened yet. So just keep those two things in mind whenever you're thinking about shaving your face. I mean, yes, at first the hair will technically be darker, but it will get back to its natural state if you give it a chance. But I can tell you from years of facial hair removal that I have not gotten more hair over time. My hair doesn't grow faster on my face. My hair and nails just naturally grow fast. I know that. I know the normal rate for myself. So I know doing this on a daily basis doesn't necessarily accelerate the hair growth. I do just want to let you guys know that that myth is a myth. And of course, if you're doing this for the first time, do your research before you do it. Just make sure you're comfortable and you know all of the avenues you can take and what to expect. I picked this up at Walmart for about $20, which, I mean, seems kind of hefty at first, but this is rechargeable. You can use it all over your body, which is great whenever you're going out of town. And I've had this for a couple of years and the sucker is still going strong. So this is a great investment for me. I know the flawless facial hair remover from, I think it's Final Touch? No, Finishing Touch, Finishing Touch. I know that one has gone very viral recently. That is also a great alternative. I believe that's at Ulta. I believe that's around 20 bucks as well. But the thing about those for me is that the head on it is maybe the size of a quarter. Not even, I kind of think it's the size of a nickel, again, haven't purchased one. Whenever you're doing your entire face, I don't want to sit there and do little itty bitty circles and take 10 years to get this done. With this, it takes about four passes and I'm good to go. So I will stick with this for a while. Um, I mean, I may probably will pick up the Flawless Touch eventually just to try it out to see what it's about. But this is great if you're like me and really want to save time. Well, I guess that's it for this video. Um, I know it's kind of weird. I just... I was getting ready in the morning and I was shaving my face and realized that it's kind of hard of a subject for people to talk about, which I totally understand. But I have no problem talking about it. I have no shame in my sash or my sideburns. I just prefer to get rid of them. And there's no shame in the way your body naturally looks and there's no shame in wanting to change it. If it makes you happy, just go do the damn thing. <laughs> If y'all have any questions, please sound off in the comment section. You can also contact me on all of my social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, everything is Nikki Kins. I love talking with y'all. I love getting feedback. I love chatting. Go follow me on all of those. Hit me up and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye. Of course, it's really hard to talk about your mustache, y'all. <coughs> oh my God. <coughs> Oh my god, I am so graceful. I mean, if you want to talk about facial hair, just look at this beauty. Say bye, Zoe! <laughs>